So now we're going to look at calorimetry, the measurement of heats of reactions. And one of the central components of this is that generally we have a reaction and then we have something that uh, will be exchanging heat for that reaction. Uh, so often we are doing this in solution, in water. So we have a reaction in water. And so if the reaction is exothermic, it gives off heat, which would be negative heat of the reaction. The water or the solution will be absorbing the heat, so that would be a positive. But that negative sign will be changing this negative into a positive. So the negative doesn't matter what side it's on, it's always this exchanging the sign. So if we have an endothermic reaction, this is positive. The solutions uh, will be given the heat to the reaction, so that'd be exothermic, negative, the negative, and the negative create our positive. For the solution, we use our specific heat equation. And for the reaction, uh, our enthalpy uh, heat equation. And this will have uh, both moles and the coefficient from the balanced reaction in it. And then we can often are solving for the reaction in these uh, calculations. So we rearrange it for the heat of reaction and we get our coefficient times the heat divided by moles of reaction. So let's use this for um, racking barium with water to make some barium hydroxide. So we have, um, and to go to enthalpy, our delta H, this is specifically under constant pressure. So delta H is our heat measured under constant pressure. And since we live in a constant pressure bath, that's how we mostly work. Um, so we have 1.25 grams of barium put into 100 grams of water. And the barium is a limiting reaction in this. We'll have uh, to calculate that out. Uh, we're asking what the enthalpy of reaction is for this reaction is written. So we're going to start with our heat of solution uh, to convert our temperature um, into a delta T. So we have a final temperature of 31.8, subtract our initial temperature off into 5, we end up with 9.3 degrees Celsius. And for a delta T, since the degree size is the same for Celsius and Kelvin, delta T, Celsius and Kelvin are fully interchangeable. So we have 9.3 Kelvin, the mass in our equation, we want to be uh, the total mass. So it's the mass of the solution. So it would be the water plus the bearing that we're adding on to it. So we add the two masses together. These are specific heat um, of water. It was given to us, uh, our delta T. We see that we are um, releasing, uh, the solution is absorbing uh, 3940 joules of heat. So the solution absorbs it, we change the sign, and the reaction now is releasing it. It's an exothermic reaction, it's releasing that heat. We're gonna need moles for our enthalpy, so we take our mass of barium, the limiting reactant, divided by its atomic mass, we get our moles, 9.1 times the mass of moles of barium. We put it into our equation, so the NC is the coefficient, that's one for barium, so one mole. We bring down our heat of reaction now, the negative 3940 joules, divide by the moles of barium, and get uh, minus 433 times 10 to the fifth joules, which comes out to be a minus 433 kilojoules. Now, this normally we normally present our heat in terms of kilojoules. So let's do one more of these reactions, calculations. One's a more a trickier calculation. We're dropping a hot piece of tin into room temperature water. So we have 10 grams of tin um, at 95.8 Celsius. We're dropping that into 105 grams of water at 22.2 degrees Celsius. We're given our specific heat capacity of tin of 0.21 joules per gram Kelvin. And that of water, 4.184 joules per gram Kelvin. So we're going to start off again, just saying that as the tin loses heat, the water is going to absorb heat. So 
Uh, we have a negative over here, a negative inside, so the two negatives cancel. I said that wrong. So a negative uh, uh, heat, because the tin is losing heat, uh, the water is positive, and the negative keeps the equation balanced here. So we write these out in terms of the specific heat capacity mass times heat capacity times delta T on both sides. So our masses are different, our heat capacities are different, and our delta Ts are different. We have two unknowns. We can't solve the equation with two unknowns. So we're going to expand that delta T into a final minus initial. So when we do that, we now end up with one final temperature. So when we drop uh, the tin into water, it comes to thermal equilibrium which means that they have the same final temperature. So now we only have one unknown, the final temperature. We have all values for other things, so we're going to solve for our final temperature. So we're going to uh, put in our mass of tin, specific heat, uh, final minus the initial temperature. Is the, our negative mass of water times this specific heat, final minus initial temperature of water. And you see I put my temperatures in in Celsius, even though the um, unit on our specific heat is Kelvin. And we'll watch our units go through to show that whatever units we put into this equation are the units that we receive out of this equation. So we start multiplying the numbers together, distrib distributing them through the parenthesis, uh, pulling the um, Temperature, final temperature on one side, so we can finally divide it out. And we'll watch our units. So we have got our grams canceling with grams. We have joules per Kelvin for this number. Um, we multiply it through. We'll have joules per Kelvin on the number multiplying our temperature. And the other product is joules Celsius per Kelvin. So we pull our joules Celsius per Kelvin number two one side, the number in front of the, uh, uh, the temperature, final temperature is a joule per Kelvin. Uh, then when we do our final division here, our joule per Kelvin is going to be canceling off and we're left with Celsius, so it gives us our final temperature in the units that we put into it. Uh, so we end up with our final temperature of 22.6. It is a, a tedious calculation here. If not careful, if you drop a sign along the way. You just have to be careful when you do this complicated of a, of a problem. You watch all your units and signs.